Hi, Matt Johnson, another episode of Deck Talk. Thanks for watching last week's episode where we talked about soft rigging, where we rig soft plastic baits for bass fishing, everything from jig worms to creature baits to finesse tactics. And I got a lot of awesome feedback from you guys. I appreciate all that. I followed up to a lot of email questions on specific ways to tune some of the soft plastics, some of the rod choices I've been asked, situations. I had stuff from Minnesota all the way into Wisconsin, Dakotas. I even had somebody from Georgia contact me asking a specific question about some of the bait and tactics you watched on the show. So I really appreciate the feedback. One of the common questions I got though last week was, okay, you talked about some of the plastics and the hook choices and all that sort of stuff, but what do you use for line? So I want to touch on line today, line options. For fishing, we're going to talk about everything from panfish to muskies and hopefully touch a variety of situations in between and then you can provide your feedback and I'd be happy to follow up with any additional questions you have. So we're going to talk about some of the options from Vicious Fishing Line. Vicious Fishing today, they have a whole variety of line options. Everything from, like I said, panfish to larger game fish and even ice lines. You learn some of the ice topics I talked about as well as some of the articles we talked about some of the vicious ice lines that come in two different models, be it clear and high vis yellow. Some of those apply to open water as well. So let's go through some of the line options and go through the gamut of some things you can use when you're on the boat. And we'll talk about type of setups to use them for and situations, and, and we'll go from there. So to start things off, is vicious, the panfish line options out there. Again, just like the ice lines, there's two different choices in terms of color. You have clear and you have high vis yellow. The high vis yellow I use quite a bit, especially when I'm guiding clients, if they need to line watch what they're doing. You can see the line into the water. It is basically invisible to the fish, but in terms to the angler, it gives you the confidence that you can see the line. My dad likes this line because he has a harder time seeing some of the clearer lines on the surface of the water. So this high vis gives you the upper hand to see when you're jigging. Watch those light movements in the line when the sunfish or crappie just picks up the bait when you're vertically jigging. So a very, very nice option for those who want the high vis option. Otherwise, you can go with the standard clear, which is probably one of the more popular options for some of the anglers I've been fishing with. Confidence. They have clear in their mind. That's what they fish with. And everything comes up in all the popular panfish sizes, two, four, six, eight. And you can even use this panfish line for light walleyes, all sorts of applications. So I happen to be having six pound here, eight pound here. I got four on a lot of my rods for fishing bluegills and crappies. So look for the yellow box if you're targeting the panfish stuff. It's a high, high performance line. I think you'd be very happy with it. It's a copolymer, which is the best of both worlds. It's monofilament coated in fluorocarbon or fused with fluorocarbon, however you want to look at it. Works very well for a variety of panfish situations, whether you're fishing heavy cover, vertically jigging in open water, casting under a float. It's one of those lines you can use and get by with no matter what you're going to do this summer targeting bluegills crappies, and I've been using it quite a bit already this spring and going into the summer months. So expanding on from that, they have a variety of other fishing lines available. You know, I like the line dispenser packs. It comes in the larger 660 yard spools. And this is going to be for the guys that are rigging up walleye rods, light bass rods, panfish rods, looking for rigging high quantity of rods. A lot of guides pick up this spool or dispenser pack. I've been using it. It's very, very easy and effective. You can pull your line through this little hole in the front it sits still as you can spool it on. No more holding on in between your legs, having trouble some while you're trying to spool rod in real combos. You have this dispenser pack, very easy. Comes with a notch on the tip so you can cut it. And this is basically just the ultimate line. This is kind of your all performance line for monofilament. So whether you're fishing for bass, whether you're fishing for walleyes, you can even get by using this for some of your panfish or your versatile applications. So if you have a bobber rod, this works extremely well. I fished this this season for walleyes, for bass. I've caught a lot of pike on this. You fish lakes like Lake Minnetonka, guess what? You're gonna get bit off at a time or two. So that's where this comes in handy. I have this in the boat. I can spool it up real quick. It's got that dispenser pack, like I said. Packs down really nice and neat, and I can spool more rods and reels very effectively. So another line option is the Ultimate Fishing Line. This is kind of their standby, their basic foundation line. The Ultimate Series works very well for a variety of conditions. Like I said, my favorite is that Clear. Low Viz Clear works exceptionally well. Spool some of that on. Moving on with some of the monofilaments, fluorocarbon type lines. The Elite Fluorocarbon, the Pro Elite, is stuff I've been using now for a couple years. I got sent some a year or so back and tested it up on crankbaits drop shotting for largemouth bass, flipping jigs, skipping docks. 
a very, very high quality elite level fluorocarbon line. I've been using this for quite a while now. Like I said, it has low memory. It's very high abrasion resistance, so you can flip it around heavy cover. It comes in the popular sizes you want to use. This is 14 pound test in my hand. You can get it in everything from 8 to 17, you name it. It works extremely well on bait casters, spinning reels, all sorts of applications for bass fishing. I even use a lot of fluorocarbon for leader material, whether you're gonna tie off for walleye fishing or whatnot. But this is a high performance fluorocarbon for you bass heads out there for flipping, for punching foil, for jigging lead lines, for throwing crankbaits. Remember, fluorocarbon's gonna sink. So if you're fishing with crankbaits, it's gonna get down deeper than a monofilament or a braid. So fluorocarbon has become a norm for many bass fishermen. And that Pro Elite from Vicious has been one of my go-tos the last year or so. And I got this spooled on probably six or eight setups right now. So it works extremely well. Check out that Pro Elite if you're looking to use some high-performance fluorocarbon this season. One of my favorites. Next, since we're talking about monofilaments, I just kind of tipped the tap to leader material. Vicious offers a few different options for leader materials. You can get the fluorocarbon Elite in a leader material. You can buy it in a smaller pack. So this works very well if you're looking to get 25 yards or 25 pound tests or whatever it might be for tying leaders for muskies, tying leaders for, let's say, quick strike rigs, rigs a leader for walleye fishing, lindy rigs. You can get a smaller, this is just 33 yards of line in kind of what they call more of their pony spools so you don't have a larger capacity but you just want to tie leaders very, very well. Again, thin profile, packs down meat inside tackle boxes so that Pro Elite floor carbon comes in smaller spools as well if you want to use it just for a leader material. What a lot of bass guys are doing now, even musky fishermen, pike fishermen that are jigging some of those types of presentations, they got their braids tied on and then they tie a double uni knot so that that fluorocarbon leader holds in place. So you have, let's say two, three, four feet of fluorocarbon on the end. So you have the invisibility factor. If you're flipping finicky bass, let's say through cover on a lake like Minnetonka, White Bear Lake, whatever lake you might be fishing in your part of the country. So the fluorocarbon kind of a pony spool pack works exceptionally well. You also have the monofilament option and the leader material. This happens to be 80 pound test. It comes in a variety of sizes and weights, 50 yards. Again, now you can use your musk leaders. You can tie these on. You can crimp on the type of apparatuses or whatever else you want on the end. So you can throw your double bladed uh, musky baits, your big MEP spinner baits, all those sorts of things to catch your musky. So not only are you putting the Ultimate Series, the Pro Elite Series, panfish series or whatever it might be on the end of your line as the base spool you know have options for fluorocarbon and monofilament copolymer leaders as well from vicious so again when it comes to monofilament fluorocarbon they give you whatever you could ask for in every shape and size and color works exceptionally well now one of the meat and potatoes of what i throw a lot this summer is going to be braided fishing line and when it comes to braided fishing line you need to do some of your homework because it's very important when you make a purchase because when you purchase braided line we all know it's not the cheapest item in the, in the tackle box. So you want to make a good investment because braided lines, that's what it is, it's investment. You should be able to get a year out of your braided lines, if not two. Even with heavy use, I can go two seasons on some of my braid setups. So check the line always to make sure there's not a lot of abrasion. Depends on how you store it in the off months, on terms of weather and conditioning on the line. There's certain kinds of sprays and stuff you can put on there to maximize the longevity of the lines. But take a look at it. I use the Vicious, just the standard Vicious braid for a lot of what I do. 10 pound, 20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound, 80 pound for your musky fishing or larger pike. So it comes in a variety of different sizes and small diameter. Fish is very effective, extremely strong, very sensitive. As we know with braids, there's no memory. Doesn't sink a whole lot, but it's very effective for a variety of bass conditions. I think most of the viewers out there will agree that braided lines have become a norm for bass anglers. Many bass setups of braid, and then usually the other half is rigged up with your fluorocarbon, like the 100% Elite Pro fluorocarbon we talked about. So those two options are my go-to. But for the braids, like I said, it's very, very abrasion resistant. I can fish all season on this. The color that is the most popular is the moss green, your standard green color. And I put 10-pound test on some of my crankbait rods. I'm a little different than some of the normal guys that want to fish on monofilament or fluorocarbon. I'll oftentimes downsize to a eight pound or 10 pound or five pound braid because it's got a very thin profile and it really digs down deep and I feel like I keep more contact with the bottom in terms of feel because the braid line, the terms of the feel that radiates through that line into your rod tip and into your hand is much, much more aggressive. So I use a lot of braid lines, even if I'm casting crankbaits, 10 pound test braid works very well for a variety of jig worm and crankbait situations. You can always use it to cast crankbaits for walleyes, works exceptionally well. 
20 pound I use a lot for if I'm fishing a lake where I know there's a lot of pike or a shot at a muskie while I'm jig worming for bass, I'll maybe use a 20 pound test. 30 pounds seems to be a pretty good stock standard size for jig worms or jigs in heavy cover, heavier cover. And I'll use a lot of 20 or 30 pound for my Carolina rigs too if I'm casting at distance. Again, it all depends on the body of water you're fishing, water clarity, the species you're targeting, because if you're fishing a pike or musky infested lake, you want to make sure you're equipped so that if you catch a fish of that nature, you're not being broken off or cut off all the times. But also again, it depends on the size and the mood of the fish, because if these fish are really finicky, you might have to downsize to let's say a six or an eight pound fluorocarbon. But braids, you definitely want to have them a part of your arsenal. You're probably going to see most of my bass setups with braid, because I'm fishing around cover, heavy milfoil, thick vegetation, where if I want to set the hook, I need to get that fish out of there and out of there fast and get them in the boat, especially if you're fishing a tournament or if you've got a client in the boat where they might be the fish of a lifetime. So definitely give these fish's braids a shot. I've been using them now for a couple of years. Very, very exceptional fishing line. It's going to work well in a variety of situations. So that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg when it comes to fishing line. We talked about monofilaments for panfish. Very important. And I use monofilaments on panfish for basically spinning setups. Then we talked about some of the larger ultimate series lines for walleyes, pike, bass, and this can be used on both spinning setups and bait casting setups. We talked about fluorocarbon, which again, low memory, high abrasion resistance. This is good. It's very visible in the water. It's going to sink. works very well on spinning setups and bait casting setups. I'll use some of the heavier fluorocarbons in my bait casting, like 14, 17, 20 pound tests for flipping jigs, casting around dock areas, casting crankbaits. Then we went into some of the leader materials, so whether you tie your own snells, quick strike rigs, leaders, whatever it might be for walleyes, they have two options. You have the cold polymer and you have the 100% fluorocarbon in the leader material, and it comes up into the heavier pound test, like 80 pound test here in my hand, for your musky anglers out there that want to tie their own leaders and grab some of their favorite components to snap on and crimp to get the desired action and result. And then we went on to talk about the braided lines, which work on a variety of setups too, whether you're fishing walleyes, pike, bass, muskies, whatever it might be. Braids have become a norm. The super fiber spectra type lines out there on the market, very, very well, very, very popular setup there. Everything from 10 pound test to 80 pound test, to 100 pound test, your larger musky braids, and in all the different sorts of you know capacities, whether it's 100 yards, 300 yards, whatever it might be, depending on how many rods and reels you have set up. So that kind of goes through the entire gamut for what's important for you when it comes to vicious fishing when you're targeting lines this season. So hopefully I answered some of your line questions. As you know, you can contact me, Matt Johnson, at mattjohnsonoutdoors.com. You can go to mattjohnsonoutdoors.com to view some of these products and learn more, or you can tune in for more episodes of Deck Talk at decktalkonline.com, which brings you all to that same hub there at the Matt Johnson Outdoor server to learn all this information and material. But Check out underneath the video you're watching now. You'll see some of these lines pictured with some more information and links to where you can learn more and find out where you can purchase some of these items. So hopefully you learned something. I look forward to more feedback. We are now into the middle of June. Everything in the state of Minnesota is wide open, whether you're targeting panfish, walleyes, pike, muskies, bass. You can go over to Wisconsin, the Dakotas. It's fair game now. We're in the heat of the summer months. We are starting to see some 80 degree weather. So be prepared for some of your fish to move from the shallows into some of the deep water as we move into those warmer water temps and get after and catch some fish. So if you learned through things, thanks for watching this week. We'll catch you next time. This is Matt Johnson with Deck Doc.